flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna practice graphing some different angles, drawing a sketch of these angles in standard position using the rectangular coordinate system. So just the X, Y plane that we're used to seeing. And this is really important, really useful, especially moving forward when we start evaluating different trig functions, uh, getting exact values and all this stuff. It's really a necessity to be able to you know, sometimes sketch a graph of an angle to find out what quadrant it's in, to find reference angles, to find coterminal angles, right? These are all tools that we can use to do different things, such as find exact values of trig functions. So we're gonna go ahead and practice that now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sketch these angles. I'm gonna draw my y-axis, my x-axis. And what do we notice about these angles? Well, they're all in radians, right? There's no degrees here. So I gave these all in radians to help everyone practice. Uh, sketching angles in radians because that's what is more commonly used especially in pre-cal calculus all that stuff so we're gonna grab these in radians so one revolution is 360 degrees but in radians it is two pi radians so I start at zero radians I go do one revolution all the way around and that is two pi radians okay so halfway between zero and two pi is what two pi over two which simplifies to pi halfway between zero and pi is what pi over two and then halfway between pi and two pi is three pi over two. Pi over four, where is this? And first of all, how do we graph this in standard position? What does the standard position mean? Well, that means we have what we call the initial side of the angle, which just comes off here to the right along the x-axis, okay? This is our initial side. And then to form our angle, we open up this way, counterclockwise and we stop at what we call the terminal side of the angle, and that's how we form our angle pi over four, okay? So which quadrant is this pi over four in? Well, one way you can find out is I can always write all these with a common denominator of four, right? Think about this, pi is just four pi over four, so pi over four is definitely before four pi over four, right? What about this? I can rewrite this as two pi over four, Pi over four is definitely before two pi over four, so it must be somewhere in here. And in fact, pi over four is halfway between zero and two pi over four, so it's exactly halfway. It kind of splits this first quadrant into two even pieces. And this is my theta, which in this case is pi over four. So this is my angle pi over four graphed in standard position, okay? So what about this example? Seven pi over six, I can draw my y-axis, x-axis, so seven pi over six, let's think about this. I'm going from zero to pi, back to two pi. So what if I write this? Again, I could write this as six pi over six, okay? And as you get better at these, you'll be able to see, oh, seven pi over six, third quadrant, bam, and you'll be able to graph it. But when you're still practicing, it helps to write uh, these numbers uh, with a common denominator. Because then I have, what is this, three pi over two? What if I multiply that by three over three? I get nine pi over six. So we can clearly see that seven pi over six is in the third quadrant. And seven pi over six is closer to six pi over six than it is to nine pi over six, right? So it's gonna actually look something like this here. So this is what the terminal side of our angle, the initial side always starts over here on this X axis and we open up to form our angle theta, okay? Now we got another example, two pi over three. Let me draw my Y axis x-axis, okay, zero radians, pi radians, three pi over two, where is this two pi over three gonna be? I'm gonna start with my initial side, I'm gonna open up to form my angle two pi over three. Pi can be written as three pi over three, right? So we know it's definitely gonna be before pi, but what about this pi over two? Well, I could technically make a common denominator between these two but it would actually be six. I would have to multiply this by two over two and get four pi over six, and multiply this by three over three and get three pi over six, and then you'd be able to see that the angle is somewhere in here in the second quadrant, but maybe you recognize that without having to find common denominators, and if you did, good for you, that's awesome. So it's actually gonna be somewhere in here. Okay, so this is the, what, terminal side of our angle, and this is our actual angle opening up from the initial side to the terminal side in quadrant two. So again, this is third quadrant. This angle is on the third quadrant. All right, quadrant three. This is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. All right, final example. Uh-oh, now we have a negative, and I really wanted to show one of these because 
this is when you'll commonly have to sketch, when you have a negative because you'll have to sketch it and then you'll have to basically find a coterminal angle that is between zero and two pi because they're just easier to work with. So, okay, here we go. Y axis, X axis. So what does it mean when I have a negative angle? Well, my initial side of the angle is always the same. It's always over here. If I have an angle in standard position, it's off to the right here on this line, X equals, I'm sorry, on this X axis. This time, instead of opening up, counterclockwise to form my angle, I'm gonna open up clockwise. That's what happens when I have a negative. I open up this way, clockwise, to form my angle. So, this is zero. We've said that one revolution is two pi radians. So what about if I move backwards? One revolution backwards, I get to negative two pi radians. Working backwards, I get to negative pi. Working backwards, I get to negative pi over two. Right? So it's a little tricky to think about, but just be careful. When you got negatives, you're working backwards. So 0, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 4, negative 2 pi, and I could keep going backwards, okay? So where is this negative 5 pi over 6? Well, this can be written as negative 6 pi over 6, so it's actually going to be somewhere right in here. That's going to be the terminal side to my angle. And this is my angle theta, okay? So what do we notice about this angle? Well, the terminal side is actually in the same position as this angle. We have quadrant 3, okay? And the angle formed between this axis and the terminal side, for both of these are the same. These terminal sides are in the same position, and this little angle formed is pi over 6 for both of these angles. So what does this mean? Well, this is a really cool thing called coterminal angles. Basically, what I can do is I can take this angle, I can add 2 pi, and by adding 2 pi, I get to that angle. And what I can do is I can take any angle measure in radians and add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi, and I will get an angle with the terminal side in the same position, okay? Doesn't mean the angle is the same. The angle itself is different. Clearly, they're different numbers. But the terminal side is the same. The position on the um, coordinate, right, on the rectangle coordinate system is the same. And actually what's cool is the six trigonometric functions, right? If I took like sine of this and sine of this, those values would be the same as well. So it's really cool. And this is why it's so useful to be able to draw a sketch and graph different angles because moving forward, we don't want to recognize, we don't want to, I'm sorry, memorize the unit circle. And even if we do, what if we're given some angle like this? This isn't on the unit circle. So we got to draw a sketch. We got to find what we call a coterminal angle. Sometimes we've got to find a reference angle. This stuff is really useful to be able to sketch angles in standard position. So hopefully this video helped. If it did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, check out my channel for more videos, and keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you all next time.